It's a Thursday, 30th of December, 2021. Greetings from Rwanda's capital, Kigali. And here is the headlines for tonight's edition. This Friday, President Pokagame, who is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Rwanda Defense Force, sent his end-of-year message to Rwanda security organs. The Ministry of Health say the spread of COVID-19 pandemic is at an alarming rate, urging all residents to take part in the vaccination campaign and take booster shots for those who qualify. The Rwanda Standards Board, RSB, has approved the use of clean vehicle fuel that reduces air pollution at the rate of 90%. A very good evening to you and welcome to Rwanda Television News. My name is Sam Kalisa. And my name is Martina Avera. How are you, Martina? I'm very okay. How are you doing? Very great. Keeping safe? Of course, yes. All right. And of course, as we begin off our tonight's edition, let us inform you that uh, this Friday, President Pokagame, who is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Rwanda Defense Force, sent his end-of-year message to Rwandan security organs. In his message, the head of state noted that on behalf of the government of Rwanda, people of Rwanda, and on his own behalf, wishes the officers and other ranks of the RDF, as well as all members of other security organs and their families, a happy holiday season and a productive New Year. President Pokagame also conveyed uh, to the security organs his appreciation for their dedication and commitment in fulfilling, fulfilling uh, their various missions of defending and protecting the people of Rwanda in the year 2021, a period which he observed was characterized by a wide range of challenges at home and abroad. Despite those challenges, which include the COVID-19 pandemic, said, I quote, you continue to meet uh, and even exceed the expectations with unwavering deal intelligence, selflessness, and professionalism. Our nation is proud of you. The Commander-in-Chief also expressed a specific appreciation to those serving abroad, both through bilateral arrangements and peacekeeping missions. He noted that uh, being uh, far from their loved ones, especially during this festive season, is a special way of expressing their commitment to sacrifice for peace and stability on the continent and beyond, adding that uh, the whole nation is grateful for their service. As we begin the new year, President Pokagame urged uh, security forces to strive to preserve the values they stand for and uphold the resolute spirit that defines Rwandans as a people. The head of state uh, further noted that, I quote, I want you to renew your pledge to the Rwandan flag and uh, continue uh, work diligently to fully deserve the trust uh, placed in you by our people and by our allies. Once again, a very Happy New Year 2022 to all of you and your families, President Pokagame concluded. Moving on, the Ministry of Health said the spread of COVID-19 pandemic is at an alarming rate, urging all residents to take part in vaccination campaign and to take booster shots for those who qualify. The high incidence of COVID-19 virus infections has become even more worrying on Wednesday. The country recorded more than 2,000 infections in a single day. In a press conference, Health Minister Dr. Daniel Ngambije explained that the new variant known as Omicron is highly contagious, although this has not been translated into hospitalization and death rates. One major difference we have noticed about this variant is that people do not lose test and smell as one key symptom of COVID-19, as the case was in Delta variant. But the other common symptoms such as cough, cold, sneezing, fever and the rest remain. It is almost the same as normal cold and flu. This virus and normal cold have a lot of symptoms in common, but only tests can identify the difference between Omicron and seasonal flu. The number of people infected with the COVID-19 virus in one week is 6,373, representing a 5% positivity rate in one week. While in the last 24 hours, Rwanda has recorded a 9.1% positivity rate, an infection rate that Rwanda has not recorded in the last three months. Health Minister Dr. Daniel Ngamije said an assessment would be carried out across the country to assess the situation. He should not be surprised by some of the new measures being taken, including the reduction of the time one has to wait before taking vaccine booster doses from six months to three months. It is happening elsewhere across the world. In some countries, they are even administering the fourth dose, such as Israel. People should not take it as a speculation around the management of COVID-19, but rather see it as adjusting response to the virus in accordance with the available information as it comes in. The Minister of Health says vaccination is a powerful weapon against the virus. However, 
Some people still have a different view of being given booster doses, while others do not understand why vaccines of different types are being administered. Minister Ngamije emphasizes that receiving various vaccines is beneficial for the body as it increases immunity against the virus. <laughs> It is more like a country having 5,000 soldiers and they are given the opportunity to double that number to 10,000 for the safety of the country. I don't think anyone would decline that offer. We still have this challenge. The virus is still here and it is mutating every other time. We are yet to defeat it. Why can't people maximize precautions available and stand ready to face any new variants that would come in future? I think that would be a strategic choice instead of speculating about the viruses and booster shots, which do not cause any other problems to the body anyway. More than 5.4 million people have received at least two doses of COVID-19 vaccines in Rwanda while more than 7.6 million people have received their first dose, equivalent to 85% of those eligible to get vaccinated. The Minister of Health says that vaccinating as many people as possible is a great way to continue the fight against COVID-19 now and in the future, even if it requires multiple vaccinations, as some countries have even started administering the fourth dose. Reporting for RTV News, Ethan Tashabia. Thank you very much, Ethan, for the report. Still on the fight against COVID-19, some people in Kigali City say that tougher actions need to be taken in order for the public to take COVID-19 prevention measures even as seriously. The increase in the number of infections in the city is likely to result to it going back into the lockdown. Jen Mutani has the report. Public places such as markets, bus stations and slums are where you will find some of the residents in Kigali City neglecting the COVID-19 prevention guidelines. Some people say the increase of COVID-19 cases is worrying them as this could result the city going back into a lockdown. It's terrifying the way people are disobeying COVID-19 preventive guidelines and with the way variants are evolving. It's a problem. For example, micron variant spreads fast. The number of cases has risen, which may lead to the city going back to being in a lockdown. Local authorities have also stepped up their efforts to innovate ways which can help in assuring people are complying with COVID-19 prevention guidelines. The executive secretary of the Wumbogo sector, Rugabit Guadeo, says that some of the innovations they are using include cameras that help in monitoring the implementation of COVID-19 preventive guidelines in different areas. <laughs> One of the methods is installing cameras in areas we call hotspots, which are connected to a command center whereby one person uses them to remind people to adhere to preventive guidelines in 10 to 15 places at once. We are also working with various institutions such as churches, schools and health centers whereby we've put robots that remind people to adhere as they arrive. The mayor of Kigali City, Puden Surinjisa, is urging residents to take COVID-19 virus seriously as COVID-19 cases are now continuously rising. I call on people to adhere to the prevention guidelines, be it in churches, markets, bus stations and also while visiting people to avoid unnecessary movements as there is now a new COVID-19 variant. The Rwanda National Police Deputy Spokesperson, CSP, Africa Apollo, says that during festive season, people need to be more cautious and adhere to the COVID-19 prevention guidelines. In the first month of the year, cases had spiked. Hence, a lockdown was put in place. It's important for people to understand that these measures are there to protect them from getting infected and their families, hence mitigating the spread. Statistics from the Ministry of Health show that in the last seven days to 29th December, there are 6,373 new COVID-19 cases. COVID-19 cases in Kigali are 3,980, representing more than half of that recorded elsewhere across the country. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, Jen, for the story. Moving on, the Rwanda Standards Board has approved the use of clean vehicle fuel that reduces air pollution by 90%. The new clean energy on the market appears to be denser than water, different from common fuels and oils. The 1.27 grams per cubic centimeter density when it is powered into a fuel tank 
protects against metal rusting and reduces friction. Hatadi Kimana Venust is an engineer for NASA's Clean Sky Trading Company in the East and Central African region. The use of this fuel reduces the rate of gas emissions at the rate of 90%. That means that it allows people to inhale good air. Samuel Moranzi, the Director of Engineering and Urban Planning Standards Unit at the Rwanda Standards Board RSB, noted that the laboratory testing done by the agency proved the fuel to be standard in terms of reducing air pollutions that results from vehicle fumes. There are many vehicles in circulation that contribute to air pollution, but we cannot dump them. We rather find ways to reduce the damage they cause in terms of air pollution. So we found out that the fuel can help unless used in a bad way. Even looking in other parts of the world like America and Asia, this type of fuel is being used. The oil is said to have the capacity to reduce air pollution at the rate of 90%, reduce metal friction by 90%. Save fuel by 25% and increase vehicle lifespan by 47%. One of those who have been using this oil that is commonly termed as iron vitamin says since he started using it, his car has been functioning better. Before using this oil, my engine used to have a lot of complications but that reduced ever since I started using it. The engine is stronger and consumes less fuel than before. 13% of Rwanda's gas emissions is caused by vehicles, while construction activities such as roads and other activities that use fuel account for 14% of the total emissions. The number of vehicles on the Rwandan soil has increased from 88,621 in 2010 to 161,925 in 2015. 28.6% of these vehicles are old and air pollutants at the rate of 58%. Rwanda's climate change mitigation measures indicate that the country will reduce air pollution by 38%, equivalent to 4.6 million poisonous substances in the air. The program will cost 11 billion US dollars over the next decade, from 2021 to 2030. And moving ahead, Umwali Musako, a teacher's savings and credit cooperative, has launched a new way of facilitating teachers and other members of the education system to get affordable loans that will help them to pay for their studies and for their children as well. This, part of the this was part of the resolutions rather adopted by the 23rd General Assembly of the Umwali Musako in Kigali, where 416 representatives agreed that loans are to be provided without demanding for collateral and instead repay it with a 13% interest rate using the CG salary. Jen Mutoni has more. The decision to facilitate teachers to get affordable loans that will help them to pay for their studies and their children's as well has impressed many teachers due to the fact that this loan is easy, cheap and affordable compared to the loans before. <laughs> There were limitations for those with small salaries. For example, if I needed a loan of one million, I was not able to get it due to my small salary. So with that loan in addition to the amount I already have on my account, I will be able to achieve more. Some teachers say that these loans are helpful to them as this will be a booster to the achievements they have already made through other small loans. They say this will not only improve the quality of education, but also the welfare of their families. Mwali Musako has been helpful because now I rent rooms to people and other revenues, which means loans will be paid through activities that generate income that we've established for ourselves as teachers. The Director General of Umwari Musako, Lawrence Wambaji, says that although some of the members were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, many of them have recovered from the losses and that this financial institution will continue to support them in every way possible.
We've been helping them in terms of renewing their loan agreements, and currently many have renewed theirs. Even those that get fired and get to be hired by the government, they come to us and we renew their contracts in accordance to the current conditions. The 23rd General Assembly of the Ongari Musako has also decided to reduce the interest rate for short-term loans from 16% to 14%, while the time to repay the loan to build a house for teachers and other members of Mwai Musako to increase from four years to five years. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. On the last day of the 24th edition of Rwanda International Trade Fair, commonly known as Expo, there was a massive overflow of people coming to buy goods and services. The price tag was lowered significantly in order for the traders to not return the goods to where they came from. The number of people in attendance of the 24th edition of the Rwanda International Trade Fair, commonly known as Expo, were in accordance to the prevention measures that were put in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Some of the people who attended the Expo on the last day say that it was different from other days because today they came in large numbers. In the past days, the Expo was a bit empty and lifeless. You would enter and find no buyers are around yet. When we come here, we want to explore the different stands, especially from the international sellers, and they really tried to reduce the prices, which is really nice. Today, things are much better. The prices are low, there are a variety of things to buy. The carpets, salad utensils and more are now at affordable prices. At the final day of the 2021 Expo in Jikondo, there was no ceremony due to the increase in COVID-19 cases. The company that makes pesticides for plants and livestock, Agropi, is the one that came out on top as the best exhibitors in this year's edition. I'm very thankful for the honor that has been given to us. I would first of all like to thank the government that is led by His Excellency Paul Kagame. There's a lot that they invest in us and we really learn a lot. We are currently exporting to Ghana and West Africa and looking for new market all around. The world is leaning more towards organic ways. I remember one time the expo was attacked by bees. We were able to exterminate them using one of our products and it was successful. This later on led us to have more clients and we built a stronger base. Some of the exhibitors at the fair, which was being held for the 24th time, say there was a lot going on, including improving their products, quality, and having their products showcased on an international scale. Our takeaway from this expo is that it helps us build our connections professionally. We get to learn from different countries. We also get to teach them some of few things. It's a give and take situation. Those who had financial problems were able to solve them because they had earned some money. We truly learned a lot during this experience. The 24th edition of the Rwanda International Trade Fair, which was attended by more than 300 exhibitors, started on the 9th and ended this Thursday on the 30th. On behalf of the entire news and technical team that made it happen, thank you very much for being with us. My name is Sam Kalisa. And my name is Martina Avera. Stay safe. And have a good evening.